I got a word for you today. Amen. 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 Are you ready for it? I want to talk with you this morning about a subject that's really been uh, strong in my spirit. I I'm really going to come down the street of uh, the spirit of understanding from Colossians chapter 1. And um, I want to talk a little bit about the great deficit of the spirit of understanding today. Amen. Because, just like I said what I said, there is, for instance, a lack of understanding of how to bring your prophetic destiny into manifestation. Amen. I believe one of the great deficits in the body of Christ is a lack of understanding. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. The people of God just don't know. They don't know, but beyond the spirit of knowledge, which is just not knowing, a lot of times people know, but they don't understand how to put the pieces together. Right. Yeah. They don't understand how one puzzle piece fits in another puzzle piece. And the reality is, you can have, let's say for instance, you know, when I was a kid, I used to love to put puzzles together. And just thinking about that now, I didn't know what God was birthing in me, but there was something God was birthing in me. Right? Uh, even now, I love to put puzzles together, but they're spiritual puzzles. Right? But I didn't know that God was preparing me when I was a young boy to put spiritual puzzles together by practicing on natural puzzles. There was something that God had put inside of me that drew me to puzzles. I had a, 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 an affinity, a love, and a joy that was something in me that enjoyed putting a puzzle together. But see, you can have the puzzle and you can see the picture on the outside of the box mm -hmm. and you know what that puzzle is supposed to be. Yeah. Amen. It's supposed to be a map of the world. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. And so you open up the box and here are all these pieces. That's right. Now with what you know is that all these pieces pieces are going to end up equaling that map. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you got the spirit of knowledge mm -hmm. that these pieces will equal that map. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What you don't yet have is the spirit of understanding. Because in order for this map to become whole, you have to gain understanding by putting the pieces together. Amen. Are you hearing me? Yes, and life is like that. And spiritual matters are like that. One of the things that we're seeing in America today, and it's not just America, I said this to somebody this week, this is happening globally, all over the world. One of the things we are seeing today is a deficit of knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. People all over the globe, not only spiritually, but naturally, it's really bad spiritually, but it's just as bad in the natural arena. People don't know, they don't understand, and they don't have wisdom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, if you look at the book of Proverbs, uh, Proverbs is the book in the Bible, and Ecclesiastes secondarily, Proverbs is the one book in the Bible that is super concentrated with revelation about knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. It really is super concentrated with all the seven spirits of God. The fear of the Lord is out, is in there abundantly. The spirit of might, etc., etc. But those three are foundational. Mm -hmm. Knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. I've said this uh, in the past. Uh, I want to say it again. You, you have to know and understand where to get resources if you want to live abundantly. If you don't know where to get resources and then don't know how to put those resources together, you live life at a deficit. Mm -hmm. 
And then you endeavor to try to put things together sometimes that don't fit together. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And what we're seeing in the world today is a whole lot of stuff going on where people are trying to put things together that don't go together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's good. Come on. Yeah. And, and when you try to put things together that don't go together, Thank you. Uh, it results in confusion. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Well, that's good. So what we see in the world today is a whole lot of confusion. People are very confused. Mm -hmm. The world is confused. Yeah, Our exactly. leaders are confused. That's right. That's right. Our governmental leaders are confused. That's right. And they don't understand, and I'll give you the definition for understanding in just a minute. They don't understand, uh, you, you know, look, in an atmosphere of rebellion, People feel like they can do anything they want to do. Yes. And so, in that atmosphere of rebellion, separation from God, and a decision not to come under the authority of God, people begin to believe, because they have rejected the knowledge of God, that they can do anything. That's right. And so, when the cap is off, Anything goes. Right. And so the word of the Lord is a cap. It's a buffer. It protects. People don't realize how much it protects, but it protects. It protects you. It protects me. It protects the world. It protects the environment. It protects government. And as long as we can stay under that banner, we can have protection. That's right. But when we come out from under that banner... Uh, the enemy says fair game. Right. Right? right. And so God has formed and created us in a certain way, and He's put things together in a certain way that if we will simply uh, come up under what He desires for us, we'll see the fruit of the land. We'll see the abundance of God. We'll see the favor of God. Amen. But when we choose to reject that, then we see some other things. Yeah. And they're generally, almost, they're always consequences. Mm -hmm. They're consequences. And so uh, we have seen and we continue to see a spirit of confusion in the earth. Mm -hmm. and, and see, a lot of times, even the saints don't understand what they're buying into. Yeah. Because even the saints oftentimes are guilty of buying into political correctness and they will even challenge the word of the Lord and challenge a man of God and say, well, what's wrong with that? That's right. That's right. You tell me what's wrong with that. Because there's a deficit of the word of the Lord. Why is there such a deficit of understanding in the earth? Unbelievers have an excuse. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The church does not. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Mm -hmm. yeah. The believers, the saints of God, have the word of God. My wife was, we were talking yesterday about another situation and she said, honey, I don't believe that person has ever read through the Bible. And I said, you know what? That's probably true. Let me recommend something to you, everybody in here. If you have never read through the Bible, mm -hmm. please do yourself a favor. Mm -hmm. Read through the Bible. Mm -hmm. I know it's laborious. I know it takes a long time. Come on. Uh, I know it's sometimes a struggle to, do, to deal with that discipline. But please, please, yes. I beg of you. Yes. Read through the Bible Amen. at least one time in your life. Amen. Yes. Amen. It'll change your entire perspective yes. of life. Yes. And we were talking about this individual who's been probably in the Word for 20 years. But my wife was saying, I don't think they have, they don't have a, a, one of my previous fathers who's going to be with the Lord and the Father and the Lord used to call it this, a scope yeah. of the word. Yeah. They don't have a scope of the word. 
They have bits and pieces and snippets and a little bit of something here and a little bit of something there and a, a two or three verses here. And it's just snippets of the Bible, but not the scope. Because when you have the scope, then it brings understanding. If you just have bits and pieces and snippets here and there, you never develop understanding. In other words, you can't put the pieces together. A scope of the Bible enables you to get understanding. You can have a knowledge of three or four verses or maybe eight or ten verses, maybe twenty, or you have a general sense of where you can find them or whatever. Uh, that will not serve you well in bringing understanding. Mm -hmm. Please, I beg of you, read the Bible. It will change your mind. It will change your heart. It will change your understanding. It will open up arenas of the spirit realm to you that you never knew existed. Yeah. Amen. 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 But one of the things, again, that uh, is a serious problem in the body of Christ as well as the world is that so many people have never read the Bible. They don't have a holistic understanding of it. Uh, I, I almost did a message today on the ways of God. But I backed off of it, and I may incorporate some of it in here, but I backed off of it because of what I just heard the Lord say was a greater starting point. The Bible says in the Old Testament about Israel at one particular point that they were a people who had no understanding of the ways of God. When you don't have an understanding of the ways of God, you make up the rules as you go along. As a matter of fact, you just make them up yourself. And people do this all and say, well, I, I think this way. Oh, okay. You know, and, and, and people get into arguments with you about, well, they become uh, overnight theologians. <laughs> and it's like, well, you know, I know this and that, and that's what I, I put all that together. No, 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 no. You have a, a defective understanding. Because there are things that go beyond whether this is uh, the law or the prophets or the Old Testament or the New Testament. There's something called the ways of God. That supersede all of our theological information. There's something called the ways of God. And if you don't understand the ways of God, God said about um, uh, the children of Israel at one point, he said, Moses, uh, they know about my acts, but they don't know about my ways. You got to endeavor to develop an understanding about the ways of God. The word ways is uh, from the Hebrew word direct. I deal with it a lot in my uh, Consider Your Ways book. Amen. It's a path mm -hmm. well worn by walking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There is a path that God walks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You got to ask yourself, do you know it? Yeah. There is a way that God walks mm -hmm. and there is a path that he goes in. And if you don't understand the ways of God, you will get caught up in your superficial knowledge. Yes. Mm -hmm. Let me give you one of the ways of God, just to help you understand. The word of the Lord says that he gives grace and favor to those who fear him. You can have a college degree. I, uh, I chuckle oftentimes when I see people passionately, again, this is a lack of understanding, passionately doing things and pursuing things to make sure that their kids get a scholarship and all this other stuff, and they want to make sure that they get money to go to college, and I want to say to you, that is beautiful, wonderful, do that. But bigger than that, yeah. 
Put as much time into making sure that your children fear God. Amen. Amen. Colossians chapter 1. Will you go there? Colossians chapter 1 and verse 9. And this is, we won't, probably won't go anywhere where I'll ask you to turn the pages. I'll just make reference to certain things. Colossians chapter 1 and uh, verse 9. For this cause, this is Paul. For this cause, we also, since the day we heard, heard it, do not cease to pray for you right. and to desire that you might be filled, that's too overflowing, mm -hmm. with the knowledge. knowledge of his will. Yes. In what? All wisdom, All wisdom and, spiritual. and spiritual understanding. Amen. For what reason? Why do you want to be filled with this knowledge, wisdom, and understanding? Why? 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 That you may walk. So that you might what? Walk worthy. Walk worthy. That's the whole point. Paul said, I want you to be filled with knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Why? So that you can walk worthy yeah. of the calling. Yeah. So that you can walk worthy yeah. mm -hmm. of the Lord unto all pleasing. Be fruitful. That means that if you don't have knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, yeah. spirit of knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, you cannot walk worthy mm -hmm. yeah. of the Lord unto all pleasing. Mm -hmm. And you will not be fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Powerful two scriptures, just, you can spend hours on these two scriptures. We won't, but you can. You want to be fruitful? Pay attention to that. You want to please the Lord? Pay attention to this. You want to be unfruitful and constantly bumping your head up against the wall? Ignore this. <laughs> Paul said, I'm going to pray for you that you may be filled to overflowing. I don't want you to know a snippet here, a snippet there, a little bit here and a little bit there. I want you to be filled to overflowing with this stuff. Yeah. Amen. If you are blessed with this word, please join us for Sunday service at 6954 Americana Parkway in Reynoldsburg, Ohio. Also, please visit our website at EquipperCityChurch.com to access past messages and other resources. God bless you.